This section is about parametric curves. Um, a parametric curve is just sort of a new way of describing a curve. We're usually used to dealing with functions, but now we're sort of going to introduce a new variable, t. Uh, sometimes we use theta, but t is usually thought of as representing time, and we're thinking about something that's sort of moving through the plane through time. And what I mean by this is we have our coordinates, x and y, are both functions of t. Here's a real simple example of a parametric curve. Uh, x is just given as 1 plus t, and y is 5 minus 2t. And we're told t is allowed to go from negative 2 to 3. So let's try to plot this. Uh, the easiest way to approach plotting is is to first write down a table of values. So when t is negative 2, we get negative 1. When t is negative 1, we get 0. When t is 0, we get 1. And these just go up like so. When t is negative 2, y is 9. When t is negative 1, we get 7, and if you keep going, we get 5, 3, 1, negative 1. So to plot this, we just plot all the points. And as you can see, the points move along this way, so we can sort of give a direction to the curve. We can say it's moving this way. And this, of course, looks like a line. And the way we can see that it actually is a line is we can get rid of the parameter t. So one way to do that is to solve for t get x minus 1 is t, and if I put that in the equation for y, 1 so y is just a line, we get negative 2x plus 7. So I just went through plotting a parametric curve and finding Cartesian equation for the curve. That's what this is because it doesn't involve a parameter. Here's another example. Uh, let's try to plot it. There's no real easy way to see what this should look like just by looking at the equations. So again, I'm going to write down a table. I did this using a calculator because the numbers get kind of nasty because you're subtracting angle values minus cosine values.
Here's another example. Uh, this is actually a pretty interesting example, to me at least. This is what's called a logarithmic spiral. And the shape it, it makes is seen all over the place in nature. Uh, one place it's seen is sort of the path of a moth to a flame, or in the shapes of seashells. So let's see if we can plot this. Um, again, we make a table of values. So there's a table of values saying t should be between 0 and the square root of 2. So let's plot it. actually goes like that. So my drawing is a little limited by the points I've chosen. It should look maybe a little more like that. But this is supposed to be the shape that, or the path that a moth would follow. See there, the moth. Here's a flame. This is supposed to be the path the moth would, would follow to a flame because the idea is it keeps the it keeps the flame in one spot in its vision. So the angle between the direction it's traveling and the position of the flame in its vision stays constant the whole time. And so if you imagine the path that it follows, it, it it'll follow this type of path. Here's yet another example. Uh, let's try to plot it. Sort of the interesting thing about it is that it has this point here called the cusp. And we can actually write down an equation for this curve without the parameter. So here we can take the cube root of both sides to get y to the one third is t, and we can plug that back in for x. So we get x is y to the two-thirds, and that's exactly what this graph is.